A good, brisk morning to each of you this morning. Um, let us begin our divine service in the, with the singing of our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, October 8th, 2023 worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in the production of this broadcast are Casey Jones, Rachel Welker, and Brian Veaton. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 728, How Firm a Foundation, hymn number 728, found in the Lutheran Service Book. Thompson are sponsoring the flowers on the altar today to the glory of God in honor of their 40th wedding anniversary and in thanksgiving for their many blessings. Reverend Charles and Nancy Olander are sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God in memory of over six, 60 million unborn babies. Let us please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us salvation. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth? I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. 
and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I a poor, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought out a vine of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruits? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine. The stock that is your right hand, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man, whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you, what I do, what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed. The briars and the thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the house of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planning. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. The catechetical review in regards to the sacrament of holy baptism. How can water do such great things? Certainly Certainly not. not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. The epistle reading from Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. If anyone, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. 
Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. And he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? And they said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard the words of Christ, we confess our common Christian faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection. Please be seated. This time, if there are any children who'd like to come forward, you're invited to do so for a brief children's message. Okay, kids. This one was rough. It's rough. I want to ask you, if you get something, think about Christmas or your birthday. And you get a gift. You get something brand new. And you promise to take care of it. And then you don't. 
you misuse it. You take your new toy and you beat it off the kitchen table or you throw it around. What happens? It breaks. If you're not using what you got right, what do mom and dad do? They might get mad. Might they say something like, if you don't treat this right, I'm going to have to take it away from you. Yeah, yeah. We've got things we're supposed to use properly, right? Like we don't use a wrench as a hammer, do we? We shouldn't use a fork as a screwdriver, should we? We shouldn't misuse the toys that we have for something else, should we? No, no. Well, Jesus is talking to some men who were misusing God's word. They weren't using it properly. They weren't using it right. This is called the kingdom of God. The forgiveness of sins, confession, absolution. Trusting in God for our salvation. And they were saying, trust you. You do what you do. If you do it really good, everything will be all right and just fine. And Jesus came with a different message. Jesus came with the message that if you trust him, you have the forgiveness of your sins. And these men that Jesus was talking to listened really hard. And they listened very intently. And they probably rubbed their beards and they thought about it. And they said, no, no, that's not true. That's not the way it goes. Well, you know already why did God send Jesus? What was Jesus' mission? What did he do? Exactly, Addison. He takes away our sins. That's absolutely right. That's what he came to do. And Jesus said for, to trust, right? Jesus wants us to trust him that he is the one who takes away our sins and gives us eternal life. Now, this is when I said this is really a hard one today because God says, if you don't want to trust Jesus, well, I'll just take that message away from you. Now, God is very patient and he lets it go for a very long time. But if people keep pushing back against him, if people ignore him, if people don't listen to him, he says, okay, all right. I'm going to take the message of Jesus away from you. And so here in our church, we want to keep that message of God, the message that Jesus came for us. He was born for us. He lived a perfect life for us. He died an innocent death for us. He rose from the grave for us. And because of everything Jesus did, God forgives our sins and gives us eternal life. It, it doesn't seem like a difficult message. And it's not. It's pretty easy. And we want to keep that message, don't we, Caleb? We want to keep that message forever and for always, that Jesus Christ is our Savior. Because that's a message your parents want you to hear, and they want you to tell that message to your children and to your grandchildren, so that the message of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins through him continues to be here in our town, in our place, 
among our <coughs> people. And so we hold on to that message. We keep it. We treat it right and we treat it well. We listen to it again and again and we learn what it says and then we tell others about it. That's why you're here this morning, to hear that message again, to understand that message, to receive the forgiveness of your sins and then to go out into the world and live out your life in forgiveness and grace in Jesus Christ. Remember, it's all about what Jesus has done for you. Let's fold our hands. Dear Jesus, the message of your work is so important to us. We pray that we would never push it away or forget it or mistreat it. And we ask you to keep it among us so that your word and your grace and your love and your sacraments may always be in our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for coming down. If you would, please return back to your families and we will continue with the singing of our next hymn.
The sermon text this morning from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. The words of our text. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Repentance and faith. Those are the fruits of the kingdom of God. Repentance and faith. Now, different than the fruits of the Spirit, which are peace, patience, kindness, love, and so on and, and so forth. But focusing this morning on the fruits of the kingdom of God. Ever since the fall into sin, ever since the first sin of Adam and Eve, God has sent his kingdom, or in this case, his vineyard among humanity. What is the reign of God? The reign of God is confession and absolution, repentance and faith. The entire Old Testament sacrificial system pointed to that. The entire Old Testament sacrificial system was pointing to the Messiah who was to come, the Messiah who would be the single solitary great sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. God asked his people to trust his promises. In so many Old Testament commands, God was asking his people to trust him. You remember the wilderness travels of the people of Israel, 40 years in the wilderness. And God asked them to trust so many things. Moses, remember when they needed water? Hit the rock with your staff. Hit the rock with your staff and there will be water. What about the serpents, right? The serpents, the venomous serpents who went among the people of Israel. And God said to Moses, make a snake out of bronze, make a serpent out of bronze and put it on a pole. And anyone who looks upon this serpent on the pole when they are bitten will live. Or how about this one? Walk around a walled city Blow your trumpets, bang your drums, shout your voices, and the walls will come tumbling down. None of that seems logical. None of that seems even reasonable. And yet each of them is an exercise in trusting the promises of God, that he will do the very thing that he says he will do. Now in Jesus of Nazareth, God is doing a new thing. And we are asked to trust God's promise in and through Jesus. Trust the promise of what Jesus is doing for us and on our behalf. Today we find Jesus in Jerusalem and Jesus knows the very reason why it is that he is in Jerusalem. He knows he's headed to the cross. He knows his opponents are planning to put him to death. His opponents are planning to kill him. Does he do the very human thing then of lashing out at them, doing a preemptive strike upon them? No, he doesn't. We find that the purpose of the parable of the vineyard is intended to expose their plans and to condemn them through their own words. With this parable, Jesus is seeking to lead them to repentance and faith in Jesus himself. And yet, like Pharaoh, these men to whom Jesus is directing this parable harden their hearts. And upon these men, judgment will fall. They understand clearly that Jesus is speaking to them. And rather than ask for an explanation from Jesus, rather than being taught by Jesus, they continue their plot to arrest and to kill Jesus. What then is going to be taken from them? The reign of God is going to be taken from among them. That is, the very blessing and salvation that Jesus himself is bringing will be taken from these leaders of the people. They had seen Jesus. They had been witnesses to Jesus' teaching. 
They had seen his miracles, but the chief priests and the elders and the teachers of the people had rejected Jesus, rejected the very things that Jesus had done. They deny that Jesus' ministry is carried out in the power and the spirit of God the Father. And as a consequence, they will be rejected on account of the sin for which there is no forgiveness, either in time or in eternity. And what is that unforgivable sin? That sin is persistent unbelief. That is the for- unforgivable sin. It shuts down the forgiveness that God is trying to offer. It pushes God's forgiveness away. It denies the gifts that God has to give. So persistent unbelief condemns. Others will receive that blessing. The blessing of eternal life, the blessing of forgiveness, the blessing of God's righteousness through Jesus Christ. And the vineyard then will produce its proper fruit of repentance and faith. In the recounting of this parable and through the actions of the leaders of the people, we see the power of unbelief that resides in all of humanity. The power of unbelief that rests apart from God's saving grace. We also see the ability of human beings to harden their hearts and to resist the will of God. And this is a problem that resides in each and every one of us too. It must be guarded against, lest it gain full reign over us. What problem is that? It is the problem of hardening our hearts against Jesus and against the message that he comes with. The old Adam within us pushes back against repentance. It pushes back against faith in Christ. That is why the law of God is proclaimed among us. It is proclaimed so that we are aware of our sins that we are confronted with them, confronted with the terrors of God's justice and the punishment of God. To you who are young, please remember that this is something that never, ever leaves us. The sin of unbelief or the sins of seeking after the gods of this world stalk us all the days that we live. They hold out their goblets of freedom and release from the supposed chains of Jesus Christ. Who is he? Asks the world of you. What gives him the right to lay claim to your life? The old Adam, sin and the devil all conspire within you to find a way to put Jesus to death yet again. To you who are yet younger still, be warned, especially you who are in confirmation classes and studying your scriptures and learning your catechism for the first time. Be warned that too many have given up their vows of allegiance to Christ and to his forgiveness. Their parents are in dread and fear for the wrath of God to fall upon their children. And indeed, there are children, too, who fear that the wrath of God will fall upon their parents because their parents have rejected the word of God and turned their back on him. And yet, through all of this, we have the reign of God among us. Remember how patient the owner of the vineyard was with his tenants. God is patient with you also. God has given us the vineyard that is his reign among us. He has come to us bearing his word and his peace to us. He has washed us clean in the waters of holy baptism. And his grace flows upon grace through confession and absolution. And through the sacrament of the altar. The true body and the true blood of Jesus Christ. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This sacrament, this holy meal, is also given to you for the strengthening of your faith, for your ability to battle against the world and your own sinful desires. 
the ability to trust God unto life everlasting. Our God is a patient God. Our God is a sending God. He has sent his son to redeem us. He has continued to send his messengers into the vineyard. He continues to call us to repent of our sins and to trust Jesus Christ for our forgiveness. Yes, God is patient with us. And yet still, the patience of God has a limit. When a people reject his word, when a people reject his grace, he will draw his message from that people. And then that people will spiral downward into a people who no longer belong to God, and judgment will fall upon that people. If we as individuals or we as a people reject Christ, reject the gospel message, reject the very words of the salvation that is given by our God, reject the good news of the saving life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is then that the gospel will be taken away from us, and we will be a people who sit and dwell in darkness. And if that becomes the case, Christ, the cornerstone, will one day fall upon us. It is our prayer, our cry unto God that that day may never come, that that day may not happen, that among us, not just us here in this congregation, but in our own nation, we would be a people who cling to the word of God, a people who trust the promises of God in Christ Jesus. May the good Lord preserve us from the fate of rejecting Jesus, May the good Lord see to it that we ever remain worthy tenants, hearing the word of God, repenting of our sins, trusting in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, for our salvation. Let us render unto our God the fruit of the vineyard, confession and absolution, repentance and faith in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and your minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now rise for the singing of the offertory. You have been sharing in the morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you have just heard Rev. Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM 105.3 FM, as well as www.zlc. L-I-N-C dot O-R-G where you will find links to our internet stream and to the Facebook Live. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact our principal, Dr. Stephen Perry, 
at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have planted, nurtured, and hedged around your vineyard, the church. You sent your dear son to give his life for her. Inspire her by your Holy Spirit to yield much fruit for your kingdom and grant that many find shelter on her holy hill. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, since your Son has made us his own by his death, grant that we may share in his sufferings with confidence and that we may also know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for all orphans. Grant them a safe place in which to grow and thrive. Bring into their lives generous couples who will open their hearts to give them permanent homes through adoption. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Shine your light upon us, O Lord, that we may do what is good and right and live as faithful citizens in our nation. Bless Joseph, our president, J.B., our governor, and all those elected and appointed to make and minister and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Dear vine dresser, you prune those whom you love. Strengthen our hearts to heed your law, that we may never presume to sin nor trust in our own deeds, but look to the rainfall of your grace for our source of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you bring forth from this barren earth a holy people to press forward to your heavenly goal. Direct our zeal toward your good and gracious purpose and prosper the work of the hands that labor in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God of hosts, Lord of the nations, we woke up yesterday to find yet another war breaking out in our, in our world. We pray that you would send forth your Holy Spirit, send forth your grace to stop warfare and bloodshed among people. We pray for all those who are suffering yet again from rocket attacks and reprisals and fighting and everything that's going on. We pray that these things, O oh Lord, may never touch our shores Keep us and preserve us from such violence and danger. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Merciful Lord, you sing the song of your love over the vineyard of your church. Lift her united voice through your spirit that she in turn would freely praise your lavish grace and proclaim your salvation beyond her walls. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, hear us now as our voices raise as we together pray the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them. Read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is number 912, Christ is Our Cornerstone, hymn number 912 found in the Lutheran Service Book. Please be seated. Uh, brief, some of our brief announcements this morning. Um, looking on the inside of our bulletin here that we have uh, the nominating committee is still looking for names and individuals who would serve in the various boards and offices of our congregation. I encourage you to uh, find uh, Doug Sheely or Janet Dom or Carl Jr., Carl Aw Jr., and talk to them about what offices are still open and where you can help out and pitch in and serve the congregation. Um, so that is coming up in October, which is the election of officers. Uh, yesterday out at school, we had a speech tournament. I think it went very well, went very well for our students and uh, appreciate all the parents who pitched in and helped out there with the running of the speech tournament. I think. Uh, our kids did an excellent job yesterday. Uh, speaking of the school, we also have the Fall Fest, Fall Family Fun Fest coming up. Uh, cake walk and uh, pie and cake auction. Some of the information about that is on the ledge over in Walther Hall, just the connecting part here. So you can find that information there about making cakes and pies and bringing them in. There's also uh, ticket information and I'm sure uh, many of our ZLS students have uh, Fall Fun Fest tickets with them today. If you uh, have an opportunity to see one of them and purchase a Fall Fun Fest ticket from them and uh, attend that event out at our school. Um, 
I think that is all. Please check your Zion's light for uh, all the other announcements and activities going on. There is no vac- vacation Bible school this weekend. There's no youth group <laughs> this weekend. So may the Lord, yes, John's over here going, ah, I have to make something. May the Lord bless all of you. May he bless your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.